Here, one of the most impressive cromlechs I've ever seen. Probably the most impressive one in Portugal. Quite remarkable. The upper part right now has got the larger stones. And down below, down into the valley, and also where you can see uh, the whole landscape going off into the distance, um, is where the smaller stones are. And they were the earlier construction, whereas these larger ones up here other much larger and later construction and these seem to be the ones that have the carvings on them as well of all the strange um, uh, symbols which we're going to go and have a look at. So you can see at the bottom of this stone there's uh, clearly what looks like two circles uh, and these are two of the carvings that have actually been recorded at the site. Uh, these are said to be later um, but yeah interesting nonetheless we'll see if we can find any others and again you can see that they're carving into solid granite they're shaping the granite into these beautiful kind of egg shapes, sort of with, you know, curved tops. Quite a remarkable sight. We have a, a different range of monuments, but we have two main categories, the non-funerary monuments and the funerary monuments. The non-funerary are the oldest ones and they are basically standing stones, either solitary or organized in big megalithic enclosures. And usually these monuments are constructed here on the peninsula from the middle of the 6th millennium BC until the end of the 6th millennium. So for a short period, only 500 years. Uh, and we call these monuments not cromleks, because cromlen, cromlek means literally circle of stone, uh, but megalithic enclosures, because here they have a more elliptic shape. Uh, in fact, in continental Europe, the expression megalithic enclosure is being used more and more because we don't have as many stone circles as you guys have in England. Here we have mainly alignments, horseshoe shapes, ellipses, but rarely do we have uh, circles. This is quite an interesting stone, it looks a bit different to the others. Looks like it's fallen over, recumbent. Kind of looks pointy rather than curved. Although the underside of it looks like it's probably is one of the original curved stones. Maybe this is one they tried to break open. But yeah, it's almost like pointed on top. Unlike the others which are mostly rounded. Very interesting, it looks like the kind of zigzags we see at Newgrange and many other places upon the stones here in uh, near Avora, Portugal. On the geology and also uh, on, the, on the water network, the ridge lines that divide water basins are usually 
places that they primarily choose to build the first monuments, the non-funerary monuments. Usually they are on major water divides. You can find some monuments on uh, connections of uh, different geological niches, but usually most of them, the, the large majority of them, are within full megalithic landscapes. So in places where you don't really have uh, that uh, difference of geology. The main factor for the older monuments seems to be in fact the ridge lines, uh, and for the, the funerary monuments, uh, valleys close to the water lines. So water ridges and water lines seem to be the main factor on choosing a place to construct a monument. And uh, you had some uh, guests who were doing some dowsing at, at one of the sites. Yes. Uh, what, what sort of results were they getting? Very interesting. In Almendres, uh, I had two different uh, guests that made uh, dowsing and they both have pointed out exactly to the same place, saying that they had a line between beneath the monument. I don't know exactly the explanation for this, but uh, it's interesting. So this is the great men here, uh, near the famous Cromlech that we just visited in uh, around Evora, Portugal. Uh, this is probably at least 12 feet tall, it's at least twice my height. And so you have to question number one, why is it here? Well, it does seem that it is aligned with the summer solstice when looking at it from the Cromlech and the sun rises behind this stone and actually touches the top of this stone. Um, it's not just here on its own, it has some purpose relating uh, to the archaeoastronomy. We have to question how they put it here and, um, and how they shaped it because this is a remarkably large megalith, uh, very similar to the ones we've seen uh, in Brittany, in Karnak. And um, it's 12 feet tall, so we're looking at probably 50 tons, maybe 40 tons at least. Um, and so it's quite a remarkable piece of work, really. And it's also got this carving on it, which looks exactly like carvings, again, found in Karnak, Brittany, of some kind of sickle or scythe or staff, uh, which is like a symbol of the megalith builders. It seems to be, you know, in this part of the world. So we have to really kind of question uh, what is going on here. Uh, first of all, the shepherd's crook appears represented since the Middle East all the way to Western Europe. Uh, but uh, now that you are mentioning the connection between Alentejo and French Brittany, it's important to say that you have not only the same carvings as the shepherd's crook, but the monuments are built in the same material granite, they present roughly the same chronologies, the same material culture is associated to the monuments, so there, there is very clearly a strong connection between Alentejo and French Brittany. Uh, and we can find anything that connects these two regions uh, by land. So we believe that the connection that existed back in the Neolithic between these two regions must have been developed by sea, by traveling short distances along the coast. Uh, after the, the non-funerary monuments were abandoned in the middle of the Neolithic, they will be replaced by the funerary megalithic monuments and the first ones that will be constructed are what we call proto-megalithic thumbs. They are small uh, uh, individual uh, thumbs uh, and these ones will evolve very slowly all the way until the end of the Neolithic, transition of the fourth to the third millennium, when the big dolmens begin to be constructed, like for example, uh, Antagran Zemjain. So I just discovered this dolmen just along the side of the road. I think it's one of the ones that Julian Cope mentions in his megalithic European book. But I can't seem to work out how I got here, which is kind of strange. I seem to be getting lost but finding things. So on a strange quest to uncover the secrets of the megalithic culture of Portugal. This, the sign just outside has kind of been sort of scrubbed out almost, they put barbed wire up so you can't get in but I managed to climb over and this is quite an interesting piece really, it's like very thin kind of slabs in comparison to their general size it looks like it's toppled slightly but these are like some of the ones I've seen in Cornwall in England and in Wales but it's a very interesting piece and uh, well worth getting on camera. I've taken the GPS coordinates just so I'm absolutely sure about which one this is and exactly where it is. Can't really get in there, the barbed wire is a bit too much to get really close but this is the best I can do. So I hope you're enjoying it. I am. It's amazing. <laughs>